Good morning. I wish to personally welcome all of our veterans, those currently serving, students, faculty, and guests to Farmington Central School District Veterans Day ceremony. I also wish to personally welcome Mr. Tuffy Boeing for coming in today. Mr. Bowen served as a first lieutenant in the U.S. Army Air Forces during World War II and later served as a coach, teacher, mentor, and administrator at Farmington for many years and has made a lasting impact on the Farmington, Farmington community. Sir, welcome back to Farmington Central, and we are honored to have you with us today. Greater at Farmington. Veterans Day was first celebrated in 1919 to mark the end of World War I at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. In 1926 and 1938, Congress approved resolutions authorizing November 11th as a national holiday, owing homage and respect for veterans of all branches, conflicts, and periods served. Today, we celebrate the many personal sacrifices those in our midst have made to the betterment and protection of the freedoms that we all hold dear. On that note, please silence your cell phones and rise for the posting of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. On the way into the gymnasium, you may have noticed a small table. This table is reserved to honor our brave and selfless American military members who have perished in the skies, seas, and battlefields. Those who have not been returned to us after being taken prisoner on foreign soil. And for those who went missing and have not found their way back home. The table is round to show our everlasting, free, to our, to show our everlasting concern for our fallen comrades and our missing. The table, set for one, is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her oppressors. The white tablecloth, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single red rose reminds us of the life of each of our fallen and the, and the loved ones and friends who miss them each and every day. The vase is tied with a red ribbon a symbol of our continued determination to remember our fallen and find our missing. The slices of lemon, 
are to remind us of the bitter fate of those who will never return. The inverted wine glass, they cannot toast us with us at this time. The candle is reminiscent of the light and hope which lives, which lives in our hearts to illustrate their way home from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. And a pinch of salt symbolizes the tears endured by the friends and families of those who have fallen and of those who have not yet returned. It is my esteemed privilege to introduce our guest speaker for the 2021 Veterans Day Ceremony, Colonel Dan McDonough. Colonel McDonough is the commander of the 182nd Airlift Wing located in Peoria, Illinois. He is responsible for the wing's 1,200 traditional and full-time Illinois Air National Guardsmen tasked with maintaining and operating the, C the C-130 fleet, as well as providing special warfare command and control capability. Additionally, he assures all assigned units are able to fill their state and federal missions as directed by the State of Illinois and the U.S. Department of Defense. Colonel McDonough received a Bachelor of Science degree in Aviation Administration from Indiana State University and earned his line officer's commission through the Air National Guard Academy of Military Science. Colonel McDonough has amassed over 5,600 flight hours across the OA-37 Dragonfly, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and C-130 Hercules. He has deployed over nine times in support of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Colonel McDonough resides in the Peoria area with his wife and is an active participant in many organizations in the greater Peoria community. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Colonel Dan McDonough, Commander, 182nd Airlift Wing. Good morning, everybody. Um, I do a lot of public speaking, and there's nothing, nothing more intimidating than speaking on Veterans Day. And that's because there are some incredible stories that if we had the time that every one of these folks that are, uh, that are in the audience right now and out in closed caption land or whatever we call this, uh, they could tell you. But Captain asked me to come here and talk about my story, so that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. So thanks for bearing with me. So um, you start off with uh, Veterans Day is really not about me. It's not about the person who's still wearing the uniform. So on the, uh, on the third Saturday of May, we have what's called Armed Forces Day, and that's the day for us. That's the day when we honor the folks that are still serving. And then everybody's pretty familiar with the last Monday in May, that's when we that's the day that we remember those who gave it all. The, the, those are the folks that, uh, that honored our country by, by giving their lives. And, and that's a day that I think everybody gets that one. Memorial Day is about those that, that paid the ultimate sacrifice. But Veterans Day, as, as we discussed earlier, it started off as the end of World War I. And at the end of World War I, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we paused fighting. And so, we did that for quite a few years until Eisenhower, uh, President Eisenhower said in 1954, we're going, to make it a, uh, we're going to make it a national holiday. And at that point, everybody says, that's great, yay, yay me, I'm in the military, that, let's talk about me. Well, that's not what it was. Again, it's about these, these folks that are in uniform that have already served, those folks that have been discharged honorably. Now, there's a, there's a way you can get out under a less than honorable discharge and that, that we don't celebrate those folks. So again, today is about you folks and folks that have served previously, so thanks for what you did. There is a little controversy, you know, those of us that, uh, that are going to feel hurt that nobody's talking about us on, on today. So there are veterans, again, inside the military. A veteran is somebody that has served in a war, somebody that's gone off, done the nation's work, and then come back. So folks like us uh, say, well, then we're going to talk about me on Veterans Day, too. So uh, every one of us, though, when you get to that point, whether, whether you, have, you have been discharged, you served honorably, or whether you're a veteran that served in a war, every one of us swore an oath. And what, what, the way we do this is we go up, he's a little shorter than I am, so every one of us goes up in, in, front of the, uh, in front of a flag and we amass, we gather people, and we raise our right hand and we make a public statement. We say, I promise. And I'm going to go through this, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to kind of break it down. It says, we take this oath. I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same, 
and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to rules, excuse me, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So let's break it down. I solemnly swear, I stand up in front of you and I publicly announce that I promise to do this. It's a big deal, I promise. And I'm the only one. This isn't a bunch, this isn't a group of people. We don't, we don't swear in in mass. We swear in, it's me. I'm swearing to you with my right hand that I will do this. I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I respect the Constitution, the rules that govern our nation. I, I will die for that. I will, I'll defend our way of life, everything that we stand for, the freedom, the way that that document provides for us, I will defend that against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Enemies from either from another land, whether we go to them or they come to us, or God forbid we have people within our land that are fighting to try to take the government down. That's what we're swearing to do. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Bear. I will carry this. This is, this is my burden. True faith meaning loyalty. There's nothing you can do that would, that would reduce my loyalty to this nation. And true face to the same. We're talking about, I will be loyal to the Constitution. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. So, uh, obviously the President part's pretty easy, and the, the officers appointed over me are, are the, the, your generals, the colonels, the, the captains, those folks that are given orders. In the military, we've got there are officers, there are, there are the managers, if you will, and then there are the enlisted folk, the folk that, that uh, do all the work. The, the, and inside there, there are separate layers of everybody has a rank, so an officer wears their rank on their shoulders, just like me and captain, and then the, the enlisted folks, nowadays they wear it on their chest, like we all do, or you can wear it on your, on your shoulder, just like uh, Sergeant Groper is. So, uh, and then, so we say, we'll, we'll, we'll obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations, according to the rules. We're going we're to live by the rules. And the Uniform Code of Military Justice, that's, that's a very special set of rules that only applies to the military. And that one, you can get, uh, you get in a lot of trouble if you do something that's not in accordance with what we just got done talking about. And then they end up with, so help me God. And to touch on that a little bit, it, they're, they're making a promise to whatever higher authority it is that you believe. But they're saying, this could be so difficult, and I could have to give my life. I need your help. I need so much to the point where when the things really get tough, I'm going to need the help of God to do this. And, it, and again, I may be required to give my life to, to do that. So, so we, all take that, we all take that oath, and then we head off to training somewhere. And then we, uh, at some point... Well, back in the old days, we'd walk through a line, and they'd hand a whole bunch of stuff to us, and go, "Well, there's probably a uniform in there." And you get back to where you're where you're hanging out, and you put your uniform on, and you look at yourself in the mirror, and you go, "Wow, I, I made it. I'm I'm wearing the cloth of my nation. I'm I'm going to serve." And then at some point, like what just happened here today, uh, the national anthem plays, and I'm getting choked up now just thinking about it. When you wear this uniform and the national anthem plays, I think there's a special meaning. You folks that were, were in here watching some of these, these gentlemen that really, uh, they, they struggle to stand up. They, they, they were, some of our folks are in wheelchairs, and every one of them that could stood up and saluted the flag. And that, that's something, again, someone that wears a uniform that, that has great, deep meaning for us, that when that flag comes by, anybody that's ever that go to a, a ball game or something, they're not the people that are talking, they're not the people that are drinking their beer, they're, they're, they're folks that are standing there at, either at attention with their hand over their heart or now saluting. So it means a whole lot to us. Again, I've been doing this for 36 years and I got goosebumps when that flag flew or when that flag came here to be presented. So then eventually we go to training so that we can go off and do what we do. And we go to some sort of training and eventually a lot of us go to war. And we end up, we end up having to go to another nation to do the nation's work. And that's not very easy. It's very difficult to do to, to leave our family. But for us, that's what we signed up for. We, we bought off on this, but maybe not our wives and our children and our, our mothers and fathers. Those, so it's not very easy for them. And uh, we're over there. And again, I don't want to say it's easy for us, but we know our mission. We, we know where we're going to sleep. We know that we are either, uh, we know when we're in danger and when we're not. 
but our family back home doesn't. They're just worried about us all the time. And uh, they're worried we're going to get hurt. So a quick story, I left, uh, I, I've left my, my wife and kids nine times. And when, when the kids are young, it's really easy because they don't know any better. And then as they got older and older, it became more difficult for them. And because we've done this so much, uh, we never really paid that much attention. So my daughter, who was, at the time was 10, fifth grade, um, she cried every night th that she went to bed. And, and, you know, with having a cool dad like me, that's pretty understandable that I wouldn't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, but so my wife said, uh, well, daddy's going to be okay. D don't worry about that. And, you know, she kind of, things would calm down a little bit. And then she continued to cry every night. And so finally, after, after I'd been gone for about three months, she said, is, is, is daddy going to is daddy going to come back? Is he, is he, is he going to die? And I, I'm a pilot, and uh, so I, I fly occasionally, and I do a lot of office work when I'm not doing that. And so my wife says, oh, heck no, he, he works in an office. He's not in any danger at all, which maybe not, wasn't necessarily true. But, but so she said, oh, well, because when I was at school, my friend, I, she was bragging on the fact that her dad was in Afghanistan, and some, some other fifth grader that didn't understand it very well said, well, your, your dad's probably going to get shot. And so, again, something that, that she, again, I wear the uniform, I get all the ribbons, I get all the medals, but our family has to serve also, so she had a tough time with that one. So, again, after we go over and do our job for a while, we eventually get to come home. And, and today, um, most of us get to come home, by the way, and that's, so the folks that don't, it's, a, uh, it's an awful thing, and the, and the nation does a fantastic job of remembering those, those people. But, talking about strictly Veterans Day here today, those of us that get to come back, we're, now we are welcome to a hero's welcome. And there's some folks in the audience right now that we're not. And that's a, that's a travesty, that's horrible, that the way that this nation treated the Vietnam vets was, was terrible. So uh, I want to thank you. And again, I, I, I'm embarrassed for our nation, the way that they treated you. But th what I want you to know, although it's no consolation to you, the nation has learned. And they realized that they did a horrible thing to that generation of, of, of servicemen and women. And uh, from this point forward, it's very difficult for the nation to turn back the clock. But, but it is a very thankful nation now. And anywhere I go where I'm in uniform or uh, uh, even people that know my affiliation with, with the military thank me for my service. They buy my lunch. They uh, buy a soda whenever I go into, uh, in uniform to, to a Circle K, if you will, those kinds of things. So, the country does now respect the, the, uh, and honor the military. But it is the smallest military that we've had in, in modern times. So during World War II, at the time, at any given time, there were 12.2 million Americans serving. And during World War II, 17 million people served in World War II. And that was nearly all military-age males. If you, were, if you were old enough to be in the military and you weren't, it was because there might have been something physically wrong with you or uh, you might have been the only so the survivor that was left in your family that was not serving. So that, that's why you didn't go. So today, there are less than 2.5 million people that serve in the military. Now there's 332 million people in the United States. So 2.5, for the math, math folks here, 2.5 divided by 332 million, that's 0.7% of the population serves in the military. So that's one person out of every 133 people serves in the military. So Veterans Day is a day to remember that freedom isn't free. And uh, this great nation has a, has a long history of brave men and women that have gone off to serve and to ensure that we, we live in the life that we do and, live, and enjoy the freedom that we have. And again, some of, those, some of those brave men and women have paid the ultimate sacrifice and have, have, uh, didn't get to come home, and we can never forget them. And again, we do that on, on Memorial Day. So right now, today, there are 17 million veterans, 17 million people that have served throughout, the, uh, throughout their history, or throughout, the, uh, throughout their life. And I guarantee that if you think through your grandma, your, your grandpa, your dad, your mom, your brother, your aunt, your sister, somebody that you know, your neighbor, somebody out there is a veteran, and I need you to thank them. Just from that point, if you learn nothing from what I said today, look for those people that have served and thank them. So, and the reason is, every one of those people served in hopes that this generation would be the last one that had to serve and hoping that, that 
we could solve all the problems and uh, stop all the wars. Uh, we realize it's a pipe dream. It's probably never going to happen. Uh, but we're doing that to try to keep this, this great nation the greatest nation on earth. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to stand up here in front of, uh, in front of you folks and speak and talk about Veterans Day. I want to thank you for your attention. And God bless, uh, God bless you folks, and God bless uh, the United States of America. Thank you. Again, thank you, Colonel McDonald, for the uh, uh, very nice words and encouraging words. Over the last several years, many individuals have sent in information to honor a family member, a loved one, or a close friend. This great history from our local area has been compiled to honor the sacrifices that many have made in defense of our great nation. Thank you to all who have sent in information and assisted in putting this presentation together. Your assistance has been and will continue to be greatly appreciated. Uh, can you please dim the lights and roll the presentation?
Again, thank you for everyone that uh, took their time and did the research necessary to put that together. Um, there's no way this can be done without your assistance. So again, thank you. At this time, the high school chorus led by Mr. Aaron Ganchow will be leading all of us in the Armed Forces Medley. Anyone that is currently serving or uh, is a veteran of your respective service, once the song is played, please feel to uh, sing your service song loud and proud. Thank you all for attending today's Veterans Day ceremony. I wish to personally thank each veteran and current service member for their past and continued service to our nation. Upon conclusion of the ceremony, there will be coffee and donuts for those in attendance inside the staff workroom. A harvest team member will escort you into the staff workroom. Please rise for the playing of taps and the retirement of the colors by the American Legion. <laughs> 